Yeah, everybody. Show boy. The Tata Meister here. With. The Wild Robot. So. Um. Man, you know. Um. It's gonna be hard to do this one. <laughs> I, uh, man. Um, so, let me give a little bit of backstory behind this movie and stuff. So, the movie is written or directed by Chris Sanders. If you don't know who that is, he's directed a few famous movies. Lilo and Stitch, How to Train Your Dragon, The Croods, which is probably his weakest movie. I haven't seen Call of the Wild yet. That's his only live-action movie. And this one. He's... Quite a figure. This is the final in-house, entirely in-house DreamWorks movie, meaning they are not going to animate and do all their movies in-house anymore. Every movie from this point on after will be other studios helping them make, animate, produce the movies. Um, so yeah, the team on this is pretty, was obviously pretty passionate. We also, um... We have a really great, the guy that could close this uh, music for the score did a fantastic job. Um, he did the Green Book score, too. I'll put his name down below. Um, so, yeah, the actors is Lupita Nyong'o as Roz, the main character. Uh, we got Pedro Pascal as the fox. We got, I always forget who voices the, the goose. I'll put his name below. We got Mark Hamill as the bear. We got, um... Let's get the bear's names. Let's see. I don't think I really know Roz's name. I, I, I hope I'm saying her name right. I think I am. Yeah, Roz. Yeah, I was right about Roz. Good thing I have good editing software. Um... Yeah. So... When Wild Robot was first announced, it looked interesting. I was always hyped for this movie. It looked really nice. I liked the premise. It was very looked visually interesting. I know some people were turned off from the fact that the animals could talk, but I mean, Chris Sanders. While I don't think Lilo and Stitch and How to Train Your Dragon are the best movies of all time, Chris Sanders can prove he can dish out something great. And like I said, I mean, DreamWorks usually doesn't miss. The only DreamWorks movie I don't like is Boss Baby. The rest of them I either find okay, good, great, or amazing. And for a while, my favorite DreamWorks animated movie was the sequel to Shrek, Shrek 2. Shrek 2, I think, is the, is the best anime sequel of all time. Notice how I said, used to be my favorite DreamWorks animated movie. Because, now, now, there's a new one. Guys, let me tell you. The Wild Robot isn't just a movie. It's art. It is art and cinema form. I, I don't know how else to describe this. Like, again, when people were hyping up The Wild Robot, when I was seeing all the reviews, sometimes people overhype things. Like The Batman, for example. The Batman is the most overrated movie of all time. I stand by that. I know I'm bringing The Batman into this, but like... There's just also Ailey Romulus and... Long legs, I felt were overrated too. Especially Alien Romas, I didn't get the hype behind that at all. No. Not this one. The Wild Robot <laughs> is one of the best alien movies of all time. It's the best movie of this year, and it's also truly a cinematic accomplishment. I, I can't even again, this is a movie you have to see to believe. Again, when I tell when I tell you this, I don't say that about many movies. Like <laughs> Guys, I just gotta tell you, like, I, Chris Sanders, this is this is the ultimate DreamWorks masterpiece. I, I mean, I don't even know what to say. And I'm gonna try to put it in words as much as I can. All right, so from the voice actor, Lupita Nyong'o kills it as as uh, Roz. I mean, seriously, incredible main character. Then you have the the little goose character that she's raising, like. 
I'm gonna try to not spoil it. You gotta go into this movie as blind as possible, because there's a lot that happens. But, like, man, like, the journey that these characters go on is, like, again, it's mainly the robot and the animals. I won't spoil the third act, because there's, there's somebody that shows up in the third act that's really intimidating, but I won't spoil who it is. Again, this, you have to go into this as blind as possible. This is just a thing you have to experience for yourself. I mean, guys, when I'm t Transformers 1 was amazing, don't get me wrong. But I remember seeing Dr. Lamington say, like, this got a three and a half star. Like, he gave that three and a half star saying this is less good than Transformers 1. And I'm, and I'm just staring at him like, what? Like, dude, are you fucking high? Uh, bro, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, this clears Transformers 1. And that's somebody, that's coming from me. There's someone who loved Transformers 1 and thought that was almost as good as Rise of the Beast. Like, <sighs> like, bro, no. This clears Transformers 1 by a large margin. Like, they're not even comparable. It's like comparing, uh, bro, <laughs> okay, it, no. No, just no. They're not comparable. <laughs> Listen, I still love Transformers 1. It's still one of my favorite movies of the year, but this was, this is one another level. Like, <laughs> This is one of the best movies of all time, not just, you know, best animated movies. This is just phenomenal in every sense, from visuals. Like, bro, it felt like paintings were coming to life in the movie. Like, the visuals were insane. Like, this was Avatar-level visuals. Like, maybe even better. I mean, this, again, the visuals in this movie will blow your mind. It's insane, the stuff they were able to do. I don't understand it. Like, it doesn't even make sense. Bro, like... The animation is insane, like, and that's just coming from a guy who thinks the Spider-Verse movies. Into the Spider-Verse is incredible, don't get me wrong, but this might be a more emotionally powerful than that movie. And that's saying a lot, because I love Into the Spider-Verse, it's one of the best movies of all time. But, like, dude. I mean, bro, I was tearing up when, like, really, like, feeling the moments in this movie. I don't cry to many movies, guys. It takes a lot for me to cry. Like, the wild robot made me cry, like, multiple times. It doesn't, it takes a lot for a movie to do that, like, I've done it to Endgame, I've done it to, I think when I saw Alita the first time, I might have cried, maybe, I don't remember if I did, to be honest, um, yeah, what's another movie, I think Joker made me cry the first time, yeah, uh, again, it takes a lot, like, there's not many movies that can do that to me, they give me that emotional point where I'm, I'm shooken, like, when the credits were rolling for Wild Robot Guys, I was, I was, I went through the whole credits, like, luckily there is an after credit scene, I will tell you that, there is an after credit scene, so stick around for that, it's a nice little fun after credit scene. I just stuck around because of how amazing the movie was, and I wanted to give everybody credit on this film. <laughs> like, yeah, that's how good a movie, bro, I was clapping so hard at the end of the Wild Robot, guys. Like, I clapped the loudest in that theater. <laughs> I'm sure many people will, too. It, it, I mean, th this people that must have saw this the first time must have gave it a standing ovation. Like, there's no way. I mean, my gosh, like... Again, Pedro Pascal as the fox does a great job. Mark Hamill as the bear. I don't I don't know their exact names. I keep, like, Nez is... I'll put the name of the fox down below. But he's a great character. The characters are fantastic. Like, all of, all of them. Every single one. I gotta rewatch the movie again and catch all their names again. I know Roz's name because she's the one that gets mentioned the most. And she's the main character, but even robots have genders, which is funny. I mean, she has she pronouns, but yeah. Um, again, the composing is by the the composer, the music composer. He did such a great job. Like, man, you feel all the moments with the music and the visuals. And again, the character writing, the story writing, the directing by Chris Sanders, his writing. Oh my God, bro. I know people are going to be like, well, is this better than L Lilo and Stitch and How to Train Your Dragon? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, well, to be fair, I never thought Lilo, again, I never thought Lilo and Stitch and How to Train Your Dragon were masterpieces. As much as I love those movies, I think they're amazing. They're probably 8, 9 out of 10 movies for me. I, would, I mean, not dissing them at all. I think they're both incredible. Cruise is obviously the weakest movie, not a bad movie by any means. It's pretty fun. But yeah, this blows all of this pretty easily by, by a large margin. No, no contest, this is his best movie. I think most little people will agree when they see the movie. Like, yeah, I, I don't think that's really a contest. Yeah, Chris Sanders, uh, uh, he evolved. He freaking elevated from this. Like, this, this turned him into a legend, not just an animator legend, an a legend. He's on a level with Lee Unbridge and, and Henry Selleck now. I mean, I mean okay.
dude, I didn't know you had this in you. Like, wow. Okay, dude. Um, I know people are going to be comparing this to other movies, like, you know, Avatar, or like, or what's another you know, AI movie? And, um, I can't really, I don't know. To me, Wild Robots is its own thing. Like, comparing it to other movies is unfair, because most pe movies take inspiration from other things. In fact, this isn't even a 100% original movie. It takes inspiration from a book. It's adapted from a book. So, it's more original than most movies, because it's not a sequel or a remake or part of a franchise, but it is inspired from a book, adapted from a book, uh, that already exists. So it's not 100% original, like, people may like to believe. But, again, I still get to go support it, because it's, you know, it's, it's more original than most, and it's drafted fantastic. Like, again, I can't stress this enough. When I was watching this movie in the theater... I always, when most movies come out, I always can find a little problem. Like, Transfer was one, I found a couple problems. You know, Deadpool Wolverine, I found a couple problems. Um, Bad Boys for Life, I found, or Ride and Die too, I found a couple problems. Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of movies last year too. I didn't give any, you know, movie that rating. Okay, I'm gonna skip to the point. Listen. The Wild Robot. It's something else. It's truly something else. In fact, the wild robot is a masterpiece. <laughs> right. In two years, they gave a 10 out of 10 rating, but this deserved it. 100%. The wild robot is a 10 out of 10 movie. It's just Bar none. You know, it takes a lot for me to give out that rating, but... Man, I mean, The Wild Robot was just perfect. I gotta go see it again. That was drop-dead movie magic. I, I just, man... DreamWorks went out swinging, man. They, they really did. This was their ultimate piece of work. And I honestly don't think they'll ever top it. I'm hyped for Shrek 5. Don't get me wrong. I'm still gonna go see Shrek 5. And it sucks because their next movie is Dog Man, which is like, oh, that looks so terrible. I'm, I'm just, why? Listen, I like the Captain Underpants movie. I think it's fine enough. It's like a 6, 7 out of 10 movie. But Dog Man, who asked for this? Like, I know some people are actually excited for that, which I'm like, okay. The trailer did not do it for me. Dog Man, just, the trailer was just so bad. I hate that trailer. I know people hate the Minecraft trailer, but I'm sorry, the Dog Man trailer just sucks. Like, it, just, it is just bad to get it. I don't care. I, people that defend that trailer blow my mind. Like, what are you seeing in this? Quite literally. Every time that trailer plays, I'm just, I'm just cringing. But I've never been a dog man person anyway, so. But anyway, besides the point, DreamWorks has always kind of been inconsistent with quality. I mean, yeah, Kung Fu Panda 4, I heard, wasn't that good. I heard that one was, like, way less good than, you know, uh, Puss in Boots Last Wish. But, uh, which I didn't review. By the way, I'll give you my brief thoughts on Puss in Boots Last Wish, I guess, since we're talking about a DreamWorks movie. I mean, yeah, it's it's an amazing sequel. Not as good as the best DreamWorks movies, but, yeah, it's great. Yeah, guys. The hype for a while, Robot, is real. Like, truly, truly, a magnificent motion picture. Beginning to end. Every atom, every scene, every decimal, every... There is just nothing wrong you can find in this movie. If you can point out what is wrong in this movie, I like to hear it. Because, legitimately, it was hard for me to find problems. <laughs> they just, they thought everything out. Like, it is the most well, one of the most well-written movies ever made. There is just so hard to find problems. I, I good luck trying to find it. it I couldn't. <laughs> I just couldn't. I mean, they, 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 Chris just thought it out so well. It was so well done. Anyway, please go support it. It needs all the money in the world. I hope... I mean, there's no way this is losing. This has to win Best Animated Feature at the Oscars next year, right? Like, there's just no way. There's just no way. It has to win. Like, I mean, I can see Flo winning. I haven't seen Flo yet. It hasn't come out yet. But, like, for right now, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I doubt Flo is as good as this. Hell, Transformers 1 wasn't even as good as this. And that was, like, the best animated movie up to this point. So, like, no. I know people like playing Inside Out, too, which... I liked Inside Out 2, but no, no. This blows both Transformers and Inside Out 2 to the freaking smithereens. Like, it makes them look like jokes. 
Like, no, I'm sorry. This is on another level. But, anyway. So, that's my review of the Wild Robot. I hope you enjoyed my little passionate ramble of an awesome movie. And I hope you go see it, if you haven't yet. This is an experience, for sure. Tatumeister signing out.